Hello, uh, this is Bernard Judge. Today is March 10th, 2010, and we are at the Chicago History Museum. Could you just play, give us your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Burton, middle initial F, uh, Nateris. Excellent. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got here from Wisconsin and the University of Wisconsin Law School and ended up in politics. Well, I was born in Wausau, Wisconsin, and I went to the state school because uh, the, the tuition was uh, uh, a state to a, a state number. If you were a citizen of, of Wisconsin, you got a, a lower tuition. Right. And uh, I, I spent four years there. I, I majored in uh, political science and um, uh, I um, sort of minored in history. And uh, then what I did was uh, I went into the Army. Uh, I was ROTC. And um, then I came back and I went to law school and I received my law degree at the University of Wisconsin Law School. And I received that degree in 1960. And then you came to Chicago for working for Montgomery Ward. Yes, I, uh, there was a, a job uh, doing defense work, trial work, and claims work. And um, I was interested in that sort of thing. Uh, that was the field that I was interested in. The other reason I went down is I, I was a very close friend to, uh, to a famous uh, labor uh, 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 professor, Nathan Feinsinger, who used to be the referee for the GM uh, contract and he taught at Wisconsin and he set up a series of interviews with the NLRB and I thought that was just too confining but so I took the war uh, the job at Montgomery Ward and in 60 you started working as the presidential uh, as a volunteer when, when J John F Kennedy was running. yes that yes uh, uh, in November of 19 uh, October and November of 1960 in particular, uh, I was walking down the street and I was on Bellevue Street, so I was knocking on doors and passing out literature and all of a sudden I hear a, a, a voice, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, you're waking up the Republicans. And I met my uh, good friend, uh, Ira Kolitz. Oh, and Ira Kolitz and I then later on well, Ira was a very close friend of George Dunn. And George Dunn, um, at that time, uh, the, uh, the committeeman's name was William Connors. And you never, Connors. you never called him by his nickname, you know. And his nickname was Bocce, yes. but you never called him that. You would really be in trouble. And um, uh, then uh, uh, Bill William Connors died. By the way, there's a park named after him mm -hmm. uh, in the Rush Street area down by the Sofitel Hotel. There's a triangle named uh, Connors Park. And um, he, was, he was an old timer and um, uh, well, he died. And then George uh, came up and he actually had a fight for committeeman with a guy by the name of Joe Delacour. Delacour had been a, a state rep, and uh, C. Connors had been the, the uh, senator, and, and Delacour and George had been the two state reps. Uh, and um, uh, we helped George get elected uh, committeeman. Very good. And um, um, so you, that's by working on the meeting, uh, Ira Kolitz, then you met George Dunn. And then what happened? You became a precinct captain for in the 42nd uh, War. I was an assistant. Assistant precinct captain. Yeah. Ira was a funny guy. You know, they had the old-time machines, see? And so there was, <laughs> it's rather humorous. Uh, there was a, a, a precinct uh, at a theater down the street from uh, uh, Gibson's. Um, and it, it, it was located where Hugo's is. There was a movie house there. Okay. And so that's where we had the precinct uh, uh, location for voting. And they had the old time machines. And Ira used to kid me, you know, uh, when we were going to take the count, you had to open up the back and look at the, the little wheels, see? So Ira, ha Ira tried to tell me that the Republicans had a magnet and that they, they would take the ring and go like this back and forth and the wheels would move. 
you know, I had a laugh. He says, you believe, you know, you, you'd never, he says, you, are you making the precinct captain out to be a liar? I said, Ira, don't give me any of that stuff. <laughs> so I, I got to know those guys. And then I got to know a number of the Jewish guys there. There was a guy by the name of Noodleman who... Um, Stuart Noodleman, was it? Oh, no, that's another name. No, that's a di that's, no, Stu Noodleman's a different guy. But okay. this is, his name was Noodleman, and um, uh, he owned a currency exchange. And um, um, he, uh, Irving Goodman and Noodleman and Jack Paul and... And then there was a guy by the name of Sam Payan, who used to be the boxing manager for, um, uh, who was the Jewish boxer? Um, ba Barney Ross. Barney Ross, okay. Yeah. And um, by the way, Ira did a wonderful thing for Barney Ross. Barney Ross came out of the Army. Uh, he was wounded in Tarawa, and uh, he, he was a morphine addict. Uh, Back in those days, in order to reduce the pain, there was nothing else you could do but take morphine. That's World War II. And uh, Ira, Ira took care of him for the rest of his life until he died. But anyhow, we all formed, and uh, along with, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, the guy that owned the restaurant, uh, help me with names. Martins? No, Schumann. Oh, Schumann. Yeah, okay. all right. Schumann. We all organized a Lakeshore Drive synagogue, and we had services up on the second floor uh, uh, of uh, Schumann's restaurant. And uh, Schumann's restaurant was located just uh, west of um, of the um, of the theater there. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a movie house. There's still well, the marquee is still there, but there was a movie house there. And we were up on the second floor, and uh, they hired a rabbi by the name of Perlo, and they started Lakeshore Drive Synagogue. And then they moved over. Uh, uh, Irving Goodman was the president. And then what happened was uh, they went over uh, to Elm Street. And um, we better get going or we won't get on to I know, I know, I, but I, it, some of this is wonderful. Well, it, well, it I, is. It's I how say. I got started. Well, anyhow, uh, how, how did I get started? You want to know how I got started? Yeah, you, how did you go from being an assistant precinct captain to being the alderman? You, well, I kept staying there. I was practicing law and I was a volunteer and um, uh, I didn't have a job. And um, uh, George wanted a high class uh, uh, lawyer to be the, the, the alderman, so he picked on a guy by the name of Mayor Goldberg. Mayor Goldberg had been a master in chancery, and he later became a judge, yes. and then he, became, he went on to the appellate court. Well, he was alderman for a little while, and uh, then he went on the bench. And I went in, uh, George said to me, you know, I don't know if you're going to get it, so I knew, I says, George, you're using me as a shill. You know, you know what a shill is? A fake, you know. So I go in, and they were going to pick somebody else. See? So I go in uh, for the first interview, and our, uh, I knew I wasn't going to get it because of the attitude of our, our uh, 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 lady committeeman. Her name was Lena Bruno. Uh, okay. The Brunos. And I walk in the door, and she says, what are you doing here? I says, I'm, you know, I'm going to try to be an alderman. You ain't going to get it, so why don't you just sit here for a little while? Well, I ask you a few questions and then leave. I said, well, thank you very much. You know. So I did that a couple of times, see? And then they, they picked on a guy by the name of Ray Freed. Ray Freed used to be the attorney for the meat packers. And the Lee Packers used to be up on Diversity Street, on the uh, northwest corner of Diversity and Sheridan Road, where Sheridan Road ends, across the street from the Elks yes. Monument. All right, so he lied to everybody. He didn't tell anybody that he was sick with cancer. So we elected him, and then he died. And in those days... Uh, in those days, uh, we didn't have a mechanism for picking an alderman uh, when somebody died. 
And uh, uh, so there was a period of about six months. So George says to me, you know, why don't you go in there and help Bobby Glasser, another one of the uh, Jewish uh, precinct captains, and r so we can run the ward. So I volunteered my time for about six months. He said, well, you did a good job, then why don't you go in and try for it? So I walk into the room and, and, and there was Mrs. Bruno, the, the committee woman, and she says, how are you? How is everything? Uh, how's your family? Uh, are your children growing up? Everything else, you know? So I walked out of there and nine o'clock at night, George says to me, he says, well, we'd like you to be our candidate. I ran for the first time. I had a rough time. It was in 71. And there were uh, two other candidates. There was a Republican fellow by the name of John Halleck, who later became the head of the Workman's Compensation uh, uh, Department of the state of Illinois, and John Stevens, who was the, uh, a, rev a revolutionary, an mm -hmm. Afro-American revolutionary uh, uh, who thought uh, uh, he was the leader from Cabrini Green. So I won. I won in 71. And you served. Now, I, um, I, 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 I don't want, I, I, I met Mayor Daley. Before we get to the mayor, you served nine terms as, as the 36 alderman. 36 years. 36 years as the alderman. Yeah. And, and, and the 42nd Ward is, is, is the front door of Chicago. It's where, I mean, it's the nightclub district. It's the Magnificent Mile. Right. And, and it's, it's many, many, the Gold Coast, and it's also the uh, place where all of the dignitaries come to stay when they come to Chicago. Is, that is correct. But it also has Cabrini Green, which is, you know, much in contrast. Well, at one time, you see, then when I went through redistricting, uh, when I went through redistricting, um, uh, because of the first war debacle, uh, what happened was the first war debacle, and I think you know what that was all about. Mm -hmm. They they um, redistricted the 42nd Ward twice, and we went down into the loop. We never used to be. Now you stopped at the river. We yeah, we stopped at the river. The first ward was downtown, see, and then uh, the first time they redistricted, I went all the way down to Cermak Road. And then there was the shape of an L, and at, at, for four years I represented Taylor Street. Yes. And then they redistricted again, and um, uh, I, I moved uh, to Jackson. And uh, they took away Taylor Street, <coughs> and, um, and that, it, we have the shape of what it is now, and there's a little strip. Like, for example, this is the 43rd Ward. And if you go across the street to the south, there in the 42nd Ward. And um, wh why uh, do we have all that meandering? We have that meandering because uh, by federal statute, they have to create a certain number of wards based on population where the possibility of either a Latino or an Afro-American can get elected. Mm -hmm. See, so that's why uh, we took the various uh, different shapes.